We're gonna have fun tonight. Good, old, fashioned, all American fun. Listen, Meg, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you here. I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable. <laughs> Meg, that was awesome! Meg Griffin has long been the show's resident outcast, often misunderstood and mistreated. However, sometimes she takes things way too far herself. From blackmail and stalking to outright criminal schemes, here are seven of the worst and most jaw-dropping things Meg has done over the years. Number seven, tried to become the new Mrs. Swanson. Meg is so starved for love that it usually doesn't take her long to get obsessive when someone shows her even the slightest affection or kindness. While checking in on Joe and Susie while Bonnie is away... Oh, hi, Bonnie. What's up? Hi, Lois. Um, I hate to bother you, but I'm going out of town for a few days to visit my father in the hospital. I was hoping that while I was gone, you could look in on Susie and Joe. But of course, Bonnie. I'd love to help. Meg, sweetie? Yeah, Mom? Bonnie wants you to look after Susie and Joe while she's out of town. Ugh, what? Why me? I don't want to have to do that. And Bonnie said you were very pretty. Meg becomes infatuated with Joe, blowing the smallest interactions out of proportion to convince herself he loves her, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's my boyfriend. How are your eggs, Joe? If he doesn't say anything about me calling him Joe, that means we're truly in love. She just called me Joe. That's kind of weird. But I'll just let it slide. She's got nothing going on. Besides, what harm could it do? They're delicious, Meg. Thanks. You're welcome. To keep Joe's wife away longer, Meg plants a gun in Bonnie's luggage, getting her arrested at the airport. Ma'am, is this your bag? I don't know how that cocaine got in there. Ma'am, this bag contains a concealed weapon. I'm gonna have to place you under arrest. Oh my goodness, how did that get in there? Later that night, she takes things even further by inserting herself into the Swanson family life. So, listen, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. What's that? Do you ever think about having another baby? Well, I don't know. I guess I'm open to it. Really? Oh, that's great. So I'll get off the pill. Well, what, what do you mean? Nothing. Nothing. Forget it. Going as far as breastfeeding Susie in public, Meg's behavior is beyond inappropriate. Number six, harbored an escaped con. Meg hasn't exactly been lucky in love, but after participating in a pen pal assignment for school, she falls for someone. Unfortunately, that someone happens to be a convict. <gasps> oh my God, Meg's dating a convict. At first, she just visits him in prison, but when he breaks out, she actually tries to hide him from the law. Because I just couldn't bear another second away from you. My God, how did you get out? I filed down a toothbrush to a fine point and stabbed the guard with the most kids. What? I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> Despite being caught, Meg refuses to call the police to return Luke to prison. They let you out of jail? Not exactly. He broke out to see me, Brian. We're in love. Meg, are you crazy? You can't harbor a fugitive. That's a felony. Only if someone finds out. Are you going to do it? Are you going to tell on me again? Harboring a fugitive is a felony, no matter how sweet he may seem. Sure, she thought she was doing it for love, but committing such a serious crime behind her family's back put them all at risk. And Meg dates a prison escapee. Oh, no. Luke, run! Joe? It's a crime with serious consequences, which Meg found out the hard way. No, Lou! Don't run downhill! You're going to jail, punk! Um, yes, I can, Meg. He's going back to jail. Well, if you're taking him to jail, you have to take me, too! I know, that's the plan. You're under arrest for harboring an escaped convict. Number five. Got physical on a driver. When Peter loses his license, Meg is left with the responsibility of driving him and all his drinking buddies around town. I said get out of the fridge. All right, all right. Jeez, Lois, I'm just trying to amuse myself since I don't have a damn driver's license. Look, Peter, it's getting a little annoying having you around the house all the time, so you'll be happy to know I got you your own personal driver. My own driver? Holy crap, that's awesome. Where is he? She's right here, Peter. Hey. God, will you guys just shut up back there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
With her inebriated father and his friends tormenting her from the back seat with their childish antics, Meg understandably grows increasingly frustrated. <laughs> Ow! Rose, will you stop it? Stop it! <laughs> hey, guys, check this out. <laughs> However, instead of kicking them out or standing up for herself, she redirects her anger in the worst possible way. When she stops suddenly, the vehicle behind her rear ends her car, and as the other driver approaches to confront her, she gets out and beats him up. What the hell is your problem, you dumb bimbo? <laughs> oh, 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 God, stop! Oh, oh, Although she was being harassed, Violence is no way to handle it. In real life, she'd be facing some serious charges. Number four, plan to disastrously trick Chris. When a new kid named Ken moves to town, Meg quickly develops a crush. Oh, Kent, this is all I ever wanted. I feel the same way, Meg. From today onward, this is our life. But when she finds out Ken is gay, and more interested in her brother Chris than her. She's devastated. I'm sorry, Meg. I think you're great, and I love hanging out with you. But there's something you should know. I'm gay. You are? Look, I really like you as a friend, but to be honest, I like Chris. Instead of moving on, Meg tries to convince Chris that he should sleep with Ken, and then tell her what it's like. But it gets worse. I'd like to use it. Oh, okay, sure. But I'd like to sort of... Upgrade it. I'd like it to be a butt hug with Kent. What? Are you out of your mind? Chris, please just sleep with Kent and then tell me all about it. Forget it, Meg. I can't just do stuff with another guy. When Chris refuses, Meg takes her plan a step further by obtaining roofies to drug him. She even tells Ken that Chris wants him and is waiting, asleep, in his bed. Yes, you read that right. Thankfully, she doesn't go through with it, but still. She plotted an assault on her own brother for her own vicarious enjoyment. I was kind of gonna roofie you. What? What is wrong with you? And Kent, I owe you an apology too. I lied when I told you that Chris wanted to sleep with you. Save it, Meg. I don't need your apologies. I can see now that you're a complete psycho. Number three, obsessively went after Brian. Remember what we said about Meg becoming obsessive over guys who show her the slightest attention? Well, you can add kidnapping and assault to her love-struck rap sheet. When no one will take her to the dance, Brian steps up. Do or whatever. <gasps> Brian, will you go with me? Are you gonna kill yourself if I don't? Yeah! Well, then my hands are pretty much tied. Oh, Brian, thank you, thank you, thank you! Oh! I have to buy a new dress. All the ones I have make me look fat. Later that night, he even defends her from Connie D'Amico. Brian, let's just go. No, 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 no. Hang, no, hang on, hang on, Meg. Hang on. You see, Connie, you're popular because you developed early and started giving hand jobs when you were 12, but now you can't stand to look at yourself in the mirror because all you see is a whore. Although he was just being a friend, albeit a drunk, affectionate friend, she takes this to mean, surprise, that they're in love. She starts off by sending him creepy baked goods. So, I baked your pie. Oh, wow. Hey, that looks delicious. Mm. Oh, this is good. What's in there? Well, there's some apples and some cinnamon and my hair. What? My hair is in the pie, Brian. But soon escalates straight into felony territory, knocking him out, kidnapping him, and worse. Are you ready? For what? For the fun we're going to have, Brian. We're going to have fun tonight. Good, old, fashioned, all American fun. Listen, Meg, uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you here. I'm, I'm a little uncomfortable. First, Meg, you need to let Brian go. But, Mom, I love him. Honey, you're just confused. Meg has serious issues and, for everyone's sake, really ought to get some help. Number two, took advantage of Chris. After catching Chris stealing from their mom's purse, Meg decides to blackmail her brother. Busted. Geez, it's so weird that mom and dad would leave the house without their purse and wallet. I wonder where they are. Her demands start off small, like making Chris do her homework or clean her room. Basic sibling stuff. Mom! Chris took money out of the- Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I thought you'd see it that way. Here's a list of stuff I need you to do for me. Shouldn't have taken that money, Chris. She's right. I'm a horrible person. But soon, her requests get increasingly disturbing. She orders him to stalk outside Planned Parenthood, take down the names of the girls who go inside, and then call them with some seriously messed up crank material. All right, good. 
Now I want you to call them as if you're their dead baby. No way. That was the last thing on your list. I, I can't do this anymore. She even reveals, or at least heavily implies, that she harbors anti-Semitic views. Like, I'm part of a group that kind of trashes Anne Frank's house every year. You know what? No, that's it. I'm not, I'm not doing any more of your crap, Meg. This goes way beyond sibling rivalry. Meg's actions are downright criminal. Number one became a religious fanatic. In this season seven episode, Meg finds religion. Talk about God. Ow. Hi, welcome to the Religion Channel's number one show, Kirk and the Lord, just hanging with me, Kirk Cameron. But instead of it being a positive influence on her life, it brings out the worst in her, becoming judgmental and patronizing. The Lord is my savior. It's that damn religion channel. She was watching it all day while she was bedridden. I wanna share the word of God with everyone I know, starting with my family. Now, everyone hold hands, because we are going to say grace before we eat. She is determined to convert Brian, an atheist, at all costs. Don't believe in God. Uh, what? Brian? How can you say that? Why, well, I, I just thought you knew. I mean, I'd never go to church. You know how I feel about that. I wanted to give you this cross. No, I don't want a crucifix. Would you want it if I threw it over there? No, please don't do that. You going to get it, boy? No, please, no. Go get it, boy! <laughs> She manages to turn the town against him to the point that he can't go about his day without being harassed for his secular beliefs. She even tries to involve him in a book burning to destroy everything that is harmful to God. A book burning? Come on, grab an armful. We have to destroy everything that's harmful to God. A person's beliefs or lack thereof, are deeply personal and trying to force anyone to conform crosses many lines. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more Family Guy content.